our guest is a vlogger um, yeah she she travels a lot she is an entrepreneur of sorts uh, she's a she's a social media personality as well also an honor personality though I don't know where she is on that now I could just go on and on and on uh, but it gives me pleasure to introduce a piece done by this wonderful lady and a lot of you especially uh, ardent listeners of Search Firm will recognize the voice and will recognize this person but uh, let's quickly listen to this wonderful piece and when we come back we'll talk to her because she's right here with us this morning so this one is titled don't call me sexy take a listen don't call me sexy i am a person with a personality and feelings not a pound of flesh to test your lame strokes or insatiable thirst on so when i walk by and your alternate brain talks at you begging you to spew some condescending sexually objectifying rapist like comments count to 10 and then shut up to the random teenage boys with blabber mouth to the loose young adult male to the elderly men who are a testament to the fact that old doesn't always equal wise to the boys or men somewhere in between who let their dangling third limb do the thinking and speaking don't call me sexy Cat calling me in the middle of the streets only to haul insults at me for getting self-conscious and briskly walking past. Pardon me, cause this is my only defense against the pack of wolves. Quickly turning sweet names like sexy baby, honey, darling to a shell, slot to ugly thin thing or flat as a wall six o'clock body. But as I said already, old doesn't always equal wise and that explains why a man thrice my age would try to slip his arms around me in a cab just to grab a hold of my right breast mistakenly my dress sense now revolves around what the safest option might be per location because surviving another day is way more important than looking good eureka large dresses must be the answer but oh no there comes another speaking of how women who cover their bodies from head to toe are freaks in bed taking time out to explain his unsolicited and invasive deepest darkest fantasies where can i run to who will believe the atrocities thrown at me daily despite having a face that boldly we do not trespass I step out of my home every single day consumed by the fear of objectification only to get blamed for people's actions I have no control over. Maybe your dress was too short. Maybe your clothes clung a little too tight. Or your hair was seductive. Maybe your makeup was too flashy or you smiled a little too much. And the award winning are you sure you didn't seem like you were begging for it? This is not a feminist poem, but a plea from a woman tired of sexual objectification. Thank you. Wow. So, did you listen to that? I hope someone somewhere, you know, uh, got moved by that wonderful piece. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce, yes, I like to fancy when I hear something really nice, especially if I have the right to fancy. Yes, our very own BK Blessing Kure on that wonderful one. How are you doing, BK? I'm doing very well, Odi. Good morning. It's nice to see you here. Nice to see you. And um, yeah, that was, that was, I don't know even, I, 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 I lack the words to describe that. It was thought provoking. And I know there are a lot of people on that table especially in this our niger in this our niger state in this mina let me let me let me, let me make it more. Please shock me let me shock you a little more <laughs> so every experience in that particular piece mm. are stuff that has happened to me mm. i i got it got inspired by i think i had the last straw recently and i was just like you know what 
I know these are things that aren't spoken about, mm -hmm. but I'm going to speak about it. And during the course of creation, I spoke to a couple of people and they're like, oh, you know, they don't talk about this thing here, but mm. so you are going to offset the order of things. And that's the problem. Mm. How is sexual harassment or objectification the order of things? Mm. Why should it be the order of things? I mean, you, every lady you meet, just randomly now, I dare you, turn around to the lady closest to you and ask her, have you ever been harassed or objectified? You will be amazed. We have like, we have stories like, shush, do you want page one? Page mm. 1000? I mean, I could go on for days. Well, and I couldn't help, you know, but think of all the cases we've had to talk about um, here on this, on the station. All the times we've had to talk about things like the sexual harassment, rape, and, you know, crazy euphemisms you know and then innuendos thrown at at ladies all in the name of oh. in the name of what exactly they call it appreciating your mm. beauty i'm mm. going to air quote this because mm. i've met people say oh yeah when i say don't call me sexy because the thing i say don't call me sexy and then they go you should even be happy i'm calling you sexy why mm. is it money is it a legal tender which i should feel appreciated i know i am beautiful I know I love my body. Being body positive as a person doesn't mean your endorsement or my sex appeal should be a trophy on my head. Mm. So, there you go. So, Blessing Kure has shaken the table. <laughs> How many people are on it? Well, like she said, maybe thousands, tens of thousands. And it's a very big problem in our society. But what makes this different from what Chimamanda Adichie has been saying for quite some time? Uh, the self acclaimed feminist and all. Uh, what if someone thinks that, well, here they come again. These feminists would never let us rest and things like that. I think you you mentioned somewhere in there that this is not another yes, uh, feminism feminist. protest or yes. some sort. So what is this exactly? I think what makes this different is most times we assume that Chimamanda is up there trying to relate to issues down here. Mm. I am a traveler and I've been to, well, over 20 states in Nigeria. Mm. Um, I have traveled a lot. It's not about, I, I believe in detribalization. I believe that, okay, we as people, I don't hold people by stereotypes. And I will imp it will impress you to say, I've been to all geopolitical zones in Nigeria. And these are things that aren't tied to one political so geopolitical zone. It happens mm. everywhere. Mm. So I'm saying, coming from a perspective of a grassroots, I am in the grassroots. I'm down here mm. talking about these things. And as I said, this is not something I dug up or an emotion. I'm saying, oh, my friend was just me that one man tried to put his arm around her. Mm. This happened to me. I'm not saying somebody called you flat as a wall, six o'clock body. Those are separate insults on separate days. Flat as a wall, separate day. Six o'clock body, separate day. Ugly, separate day. I share wall, separate day. So these are things you have to deal with. Like, no matter how covered you are, no matter how decently dressed you are, no matter how indecently dressed you are, anyhow you're dressed, people will still address that when some feel it's my right. You are a woman, so what's your, what's your use? I have met, I didn't include some experiences. I have met, I've been in a car, but in the afternoon, and this man says, oh, you're heading home. I say, yes. He's like, okay, um, how much will it cost to take you to my place? Mm -mm. And I was wearing what? Broadly I was lighter. wearing a blazer. Like, I was dressed. I just came from, like, office, official function at the radio station. So I was fully dressed and in mean, one of those high neck tops, like, looking all corporate and formal and put together. And, and I, 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 just, I was just looking like, wow. There really is, this is a new level unlocked. Mm. Like, exactly, straight up, how much would it take to take it? And I understand that some men will say, oh, some women want to be called sexy. Don't get me wrong. This is not in the confines of a an established relationship or the confines of a happy union. This is, you just met me on the road. Mm. Why are you, why, why? You don't want to know what people will look at you and talk about your lips for. Mm. You don't want to know. I, I, I can't say someone here. Like, that's what you go through every day. So it's, it's not coming from me. I'm not trying to fight you, feminist poem. I'm just saying this is unsafe for our girls. This is unsafe for the little girls. Pedophilia is on the rise. Take it or leave it. Um, abuse is on the rise. Women are unsafe. Little boys are unsafe. Don't get me wrong. This is a general poem. I'm a woman saying my story, but I know there are boys out there and men out there that have experienced the same thing and they probably would not want to speak about it. And it's, it's not my story to tell yet, but I trust that years to come, they will be willing to talk about these things. So that's it. Absolutely. So objectification. It's a big problem in our society today. What do you think causes it? Um, 
moral standing appreciation. So it's easy for you to look at a girl and say, damn, your body, I should do this to you, or I should do this to you. But when you picture it as somebody saying it to your mother mm. or your sister, it suddenly becomes less appealing, except if you're a creepy <laughs> person and you find that hot. Okay. So, so yes. Uh, I think we have um, <laughs> Blessing Kure, who has apparently been pushed to the edge. And I think this is coming at a very good time. Yes, this is a very good time to talk about things like this because it's the new normal for a lot of girls. And I think the new generation have probably come to see this as a normal thing, as a normal True. Um, as a normal way of life. So they have to, for those who are down, you know, they flow with the tide. For those who aren't, well, it's a constant battle every day. And I wonder how many of those battles are won because it gets to the point where some men, I mean, you just spoke about hands being thrown around the shoulder. Imagine if it was a secluded area or a secluded location. What's the next thing that would happen? We hear these things every day. We hear it in our newspapers all the time. Rape. And it's a really, really bad thing. And we have to stop it right now. There has to be a mindset changing right yes so apart from things like these that, that that you do spoken word how else do you think the mindset of individuals who have been probably brought up like this because we have to appreciate that at some point it's a psychological thing some of the men who are into things like these were probably raised in societies or in families where these same things happen and they're just you know turning the wheel spinning the wheel and it continues round and round so how do you think we can stop this right now with all the urgency it deserves where will be the first place if you were in a position of authority where will be your first stop First, I would start with the fact that the there's an anonymous comment under this video on my YouTube, mm. on my YouTube channel, and he said, "I am sorry to every woman I have objectified and normalized it. Mm. I stumbled on your page and I've never ever seen this as a problem. Mm. I thought I was doing them a favor." He wrote a really lengthy piece saying mm. he doesn't know where he'll find them, but he's just putting it out there that he is sorry. Mm. So education can start from every level. First of all, is to stop normalizing it. It's not okay that you think you should just throw it around. If a person specifically requests to be addressed as such, then good, but don't level it across the whole gender. And from grassroots level, I would say from the basic, from nursery school, teach little boys to respect little girls, teach from the secondary schools, primary schools, mm. institutions, just as we um, indoctrinate our children in religion and mm. um, morals and this is not what you do in your husband's house and mm. this is how you should take care of your wife, you know, all these things that we tell kids from growing up, then you need to include things like no means no, mm. don't touch a person's body, not deciphering it and putting coded languages or saying don't touch your we put it as it is mm. let this child know where the line draws because you can't keep decoding something and the child doesn't get it all right let, let's come back to why this thing um this 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 phenomenon seems hard to stop let's look at certain ladies who actually objectify themselves, themselves. Yes. yes if you go on instagram and other Twitter. social media you'll notice how the the craze for clout attention have or has made a lot of them lose all sense of morality so in terms of what they're showing you're seeing twerk videos i mean someone will record herself dancing suggestively and seductively and post it on social media how would you expect a person of the opposite sex not to see that and have all sorts of images in his head which this is a 
Twitter especially, you said Instagram, but Twitter, Twitter is the hub. Twitter is the hub. If you're on Twitter, you know that there's a lot of nudity and certain arguments have come out. Say, I think last week there was an argument on nudity being empowering and exposing your um, nudity in all forms being a form of liberation or body positivity and i still stand on my on my word saying if nudity is your means of expression then so be it but it is not the standard means of expression of body positivity or self-love which means you being naked makes you a naked person i would not look at a man that is shirtless or um having been naked and just start looking at all men naked like when i look at you i don't see your clothes i just suddenly start seeing you naked i wouldn't do that as a person so i'm saying yes there are women that um there are women that go about naked or try to put the whole battle like ten thousand years backward and make it very difficult to fight for a cause like this i'm also saying do not generalize so even though there are those yes. who would love to be objectified, you agree there are those who would love to be objectified. Yes, which is which also goes on to like point out little issues in the in the maybe emotional baggage or things they're yet to address mm. on the means of their belief. Mm. Of course, I wouldn't force my belief system. Where I'm more conservative, but mm. I wouldn't force it on somebody else because I understand that we're all brave, different. Our stories are different. Where we're coming from is different. So I would just say whatever your belief is. Is yours but i don't want the fact that they say i'm from let's say but let's say oh all nigerian girls lie lie let's just say the basic thing or oh, maybe all nigerian girls lie then i'll meet oh, all of them love money i was going that's, to say that, the, that's that's I didn't want to that. okay all nigerian <laughs> girls love money for instance and then you just say oh nice to meet you blessing mm. i heard you're a gold digger mm. you see how inappropriate that, that so, sounds and, 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 and uh you've been commodified so you're a commodity exactly i mean if you love money something has to give so you just have to um i think the generalization is the best bet we have and reorientation of the ladies as well because it's it can't fully be on the other gender All right so how do you reorient the ladies right now on on things like these especially those that are confused and who have seen this as the new normal i mean they believe they're powerless to stop it you don't think it's it has overwhelmed everyone not just yet not just yet we still have or you still have a fighting chance there are ladies who don't think there's anything that can be done about this it is natural you hear things like men will always be men and there is nothing you can do about it if you have a spouse who is doing something extra extra marital mm -hmm. they tell you that well men you are. should expect it i mean you, that's a conversation for another day. I'm telling you. That's a big conversation. In fact, there's 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 a school of thought that believes that a lot of marriages you see survive decades are uh, because one party did not speak up or raise a lot of dust. They endured. They got through their differences, mm -hmm. and that's why they survived that long. They didn't get through, and the then they, they endured the differences. Exactly, and then they blackmail you into feeling that, well, if you have a partner who is doing anything extramarital, I mean, for the sake of the community, the society, the, the children, families, the children, it's it's okay. I mean, they are men; they will always do that. You know, that's how they were made. That's how God created oh, them. God. I'm not even going to <laughs> you know, say that. And that's the reality for a lot of women on this same issue of objectification. And maybe I should add commodification because, well, they're probably synonyms. So how do we go about reorienting ladies? And some have been, they've probably, you know, fought to the point where they don't even think it's worth fighting anymore. I mean... Why don't we just jump on this moving train and let's all go after all they think they have money to offer comfort to offer make i know carry lasts make you know be two zero i'm probably hustling struggling and i'm poor here's someone offering this i mean yeah. what can i possibly lose you're looking at it from the, 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 the you're looking at it from the very top mm. you're looking at it from the money offering mm. it's as little as the cat calling mm. it's as little as pss, pss, and then turning to downright rain of insults mm. is as little as that and um certain times will be that you'll be looking for an opportunity and then it starts great your qualification your papers are all in check and suddenly you're just a very beautiful girl and you just hear something like oh you're so fine mm. you know you could do a lot more than this right mm. 
you shouldn't be working so hard. This I'm talking of, I'm pulling out my archives here. You shouldn't be working so hard. You know, you could make your annual salary in a day, right? And mm. all things like that. And then it is very difficult. I won't lie to you. You're going to lose out on certain opportunities. You're going to lose out on things you're well qualified for because you decided to take a stand. And if that's not something you're ready for, then you should have a conversation with yourself. About reorientation, I think is it's about a conversation. I saw an Instagram video of a lady saying if a man doesn't hit her at least mm. once in a week, real often. I've, I've met someone in real life that said that to me. So I'm not even going by the Instagram video. I've met somebody we were talking about abuse and she said, oh, the, the beating is not abuse, it's a sign of love. That if her man doesn't beat her to a pop, she can't feel that you are actively present in the relationship. I, 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 this house again, I was like, wow, okay. That's, a, that's some brain damage over there. <laughs> exactly. So it's a mental reorientation. She doesn't know it's wrong. She's not even willing to see it as wrong. It's normal. And if you check back, maybe that's the form of love she was taught. Like, I am beating you because I love you. And over the years, she has registered that if you love me, you should beat me because that is the iconic show of love. That's the ideal show of love. So it's reorientation in the littlest of things. Parents have, we're young people, we're going to marry, we're going to have kids, we're, we're going to train our siblings, we're going to have cousins that love us so much and just want to be around us. It's as little as saying, you know, you don't have to, like small girl, you're playing, you're playing, and she's like, oh, auntie, I want to do this, and you're like, you know, you don't have to, you're, going to be, you're beautiful. I mean, I could call my little niece and I'm like, you know, you're beautiful. I'm, I'm like, are you beautiful? She's like, yes, auntie, I'm beautiful. Straight up, she just says it. She just, she just out of the blue says it. It's, it's funny, it's cute, but she has registered it in herself that, okay, I'm wearing like Suzy's overnight overalls and whatever, and I'm still beautiful. She'll do a little twirl for you, Seth. But she has registered that she's beautiful. You coming to say, oh, you must do this for me, doesn't really count. Over to them. All right, cool one. Do you have a comment? I think um, maybe I'll, I'll drag, I'll, I'll keep BK here till about 11.30. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll just continue this conversation when we come back. If you want to listen to BK's piece, well, here it is again. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. So what should girls begin to do now, especially those who have had similar experiences to yours? What did you do when you encounter things like these? Do you pepper spray the men? <laughs> pepper spray is surprisingly expensive. Really? Yeah, it's actually expensive. That means you found out the cost. How much I is have. it? <laughs> I have. Average day. So you've thought of... Um, oh, I have. Mm, I, I mean, hope you've not thought of... Tasers are expensive too. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> of course, I don't want to end up in, the, in jail, but like, tasers are legal. Mm. Mm, but yeah, those are expensive too. Uh, anyway, so yeah, what would you advocate? Physical... No. Standing up to them? You don't have the strength. Uh, exactly. You don't have the strength. So what can you do? Unfortunately, as to add to what you can advocate, obviously fighting is not an option. Mm. You may not come out of there in one piece. A lot of them are quite violent, mm. and um, the moral, their moral like skill is quite low. Mm. So they will do anything to you. Trust me. The yeah. Nigerian legal system itself doesn't really have much product mm. provision for um, sexual harassment. Mm. I think rape has just been policies on rape have just been stepped up mm. with the recent occurrences and called by yeah. agencies but say say somebody somebody came and assaulted and just harassed you <laughs> and you're going to the police station or you're going to a, a legal outfit to say what's 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 to say that you won't even be further harassed so i guess all we can do now is to continue to you know use uh, mediums like this to enlighten ourselves and some of us do it passively just uh, like like you mentioned earlier, the mm -hmm. comments on the YouTube post, some people do it passively and they don't realize that it's a certain form of objectification. But where do we draw the line between admiring a lady that is truly beautiful and objectifying her? Beautiful. Are you saying we cannot say, if I lady, you look awesome, you okay. look beautiful okay. or you look sharp today okay we know i like, I like the words you're using i like <laughs> what you're using because i have a direct contrast to that okay we know that there are a lot of ladies who are you know intellectually active but you don't see intellectual activity <laughs> on the face you're you know a lot of people say and to a large extent it's true that has been proven men are attracted by what they see yeah. you know so you could see someone that looks 
really attractive. There's a word known as attractive, and using that word close to you now, I don't need fear even. No, 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 Odi, Odi, see. You know, so how do you draw the line? Okay, mm. so I would, they are, they are, most of these words are not radio worthy, mm. and as a radio presenter, I know better than to say them. Mm. So I'm just going to explain them in the most poetic way possible. Mm. So if you're I think we heard that in the in the That's spoken word. Good. Well, you put so it mildly there too, I didn't, right? I didn't put it mildly. I just made it like radio worthy. Mm. I made the piece radio worthy because I had to take out a lot. Trust me, I had to take out a lot of bits and bats. Mm. Um, so it's like saying, I don't think you look really good today. Mm. Or I like your face cap. I always I like your haircut or something, right? Mm. That's that's a compliment. But then and I, I walk up to you and I tell you, can you bend over? You seem flexible, you seem like you can bend over. Mm. Okay. Or straight now up that's, now that's suggestive. That's really suggestive. Or straight up I just say Do people I, do that? Or straight up I just say, Oh bless me, I love your lips and then fill in the blank. Mm. And I'm just like, Wow, now I'm never going to listen to look at my lips the same. It's, it's just creepy. Mm. I, or someone just goes on and says, someone says, oh, I love because I wear a lot of big clothes and mm. maybe I happen to wear maybe a knee length um, short or a truss or a gown or something. And then someone goes, your feet, your your feet and your skin is so supple. Oh, I could imagine da, 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 that's it. And I'm just like, I mm. just met you on the road. Mm. Couldn't you have kept that inside? So it's not it's not saying you look beautiful. That's the problem. Mm. It's someone straight up. Yo, Odi, you don't want to know. Mm. You don't want to know some of this. And so these are just examples of what people can go on to tell you. Like mm. somebody just, I was in the market one day and then somebody just walked up to me, really big guy. Mm. He was in Niger State though. He just came and hugged me and started groping me. Like out of nowhere. Mm. What was the excuse? Oh, you looked familiar. He not, no, he didn't give an excuse. When I pushed him back, I'm like, what's wrong with you? You're not even happy, Seth. Say they touch you. Hmm. I can just imagine what you have imagined doing, oh, doing you have to no him idea. at but then, that point. But then where, at mm. that place, he had boys, his goons were close by. Mm. You don't want to do that. Mm. You don't want to do that to yourself. I took the next cab that wasn't even going my way. Mm. I just jumped in the next vehicle to leave. Well, Unfortunately, you can't always fight. Mm. So that's that's the problem. Yeah. Okay, so I think um, we, we, we are learning and we learn every day. And I know a lot of guys out there honestly do not mean to objectify women, but they actually sincerely do not know yes, yes how yes. to do it appropriately. So what's the appropriate thing to do? What would be, I don't want to make this about you because this is a big problem. This is a big problem on yeah, the large scale. What would you rather have? Because in that spoken word, you listed a lot of your personal experiences so instead of all those um name calling and what's the terms um, used for it um i didn't hear body shaming in there i know that's a common word now um name uh is it name dropping name, yeah cat uh, calling cat calling is, cat the, calling. is the one that you just say yes yes it's just start calling random in those ones exactly so what would you rather have what would you um what would you uh, how would you describe a gentleman's approach. I know you've also met gentlemen. I have. Who I have. have who you've interacted with and of course. You wish you could see that person again and talk to Some the of person. them I still speak with them. Exactly. So it's not it's not like anybody is against meeting mm. people. I mm. mean but when you go on and you just go on like there are conversations you have that don't make you feel like you don't exist. Mm. All you exist is that you're a pound of flesh. That's mm. it. There's the things that like, you said. You exist Hello. for someone's you exist gratification. For some, oh, oh that mm. thing. No other way mm. to put it. You exist for someone's gratification. So if I come, if someone just stops me, it's like, oh, I've had people walking past, and th this guy just goes, oh, I love your weave. It's really nice. And I'm like, thank you very much. He's like, oh, it seems like it cost you a lot. I'm like, yes, it did. And he's like, well, it was worth it. And he goes. Mm. If I see him tomorrow, I'm not going to run the other way because mm. it was a plain compliment. So. Basically, I would just say make your compliments PG thirteen, mm. <laughs> PG ten. If you your com if your ten year old child cannot hear your compliment mm. and not cringe, mm. then or, you're or run to it. ask a guardian. What, what what does this mean? Good. So that's it. <laughs> so let's take uh, some text messages in here. Uh, this one here says, um, "Hi Od, I love the spoken word. Don't call me sexy. I shared my own experience on my blog." Uh, Prisca OA dot home dot blog are titled Uncle Stop Touching. 
I would appreciate it uh, if you share with Blessing Curry. This is Priska from Shiroro Road. Hi mm. Priska, I'll collect the link. Hi right. Priska, I'll mm. check out the link and definitely look out your phone. All right. And uh, if there's anyone else uh, into this business of enlightening people and uh, raising the awareness, uh, please do well to reach out to us as well. All right, uh, let's see. This one says, um, I have learned and enjoy this wonderful program uh, from your guests. I hope you guys will still come up with this program when the students are around so that the female population among the students will learn to define themselves. This is Friday Chelsea from MX City. All right, that's a good one. I know some of you are still there, probably composing, but uh, we have to let uh, Blessing Curry go. So, what would you say right now to someone who is being objectified? A lady who is, or who has had the bitter experience of being objectified and just doesn't know what else to do? First will be to stop blaming yourself. Because the first stage is you say, it was my fault. I did this, I did this, I did this. Um, just like in rape cases where you start to think it was your fault. No, it was the abuser's fault most times. So as the last, um, the last text message you read, he said women find a definition of who you are. We constantly fit into what they say we are. And this is a very basic question, but it's deeper than it is. Who am I? What do I want to be identified for? What do I want to be remembered for? What do I, who do I want to be? It takes a very long time to answer, but treat your journey with, with, with enthusiasm. Treat the little things you develop about yourself, the little things you learn about yourself. Be grateful for them, because it may take a while, but surely and steadily you get there. So define yourself, um, set boundaries. It's sometimes um, unrealistic to break away from these. Sometimes when the abuse is at home, you can't just up and leave because there's nowhere to turn to. Um, I recent studies from the UK and the US saying abuse case, the reports of abuse cases have heightened with the lockdown caused by the pandemic COVID-19, mm. which means most people running away from abuse sometimes are in the abusers are in the home. Mm. So you can't run away from that. So I would just say when you learn to define yourself gradually, surely but steadily, you will come out victorious. Mm. All right. Uh, we just got a text message here <laughs> from uh, Inamdi. He's texting from Daga Village. He says, It is true that most of the ladies these days are seeing most of sexual harassment as a normal thing. There was a day that, that, okay, there was a day that the guy was sexually harassing a lady. I wanted to stop it, but it seemed the girl was enjoying it, so I stupidly left them alone. Why did he say stupidly? He felt he should have done something. Yes, but he he's did feeling it. guilty now. Be careful because you don't know who is who. Check you don't know on who your is. Daughters, check yeah. on your sons. Mm. Okay, so I think uh, this is the much we'll be able to bring you this morning. Okay, thank you so much, uh, BK. Thank you so for much for sharing this with us this morning. For doing this, I mean, it's sometimes people go through uh, situations and they just sleep it away, you know. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's the only way it would stop is if you talk about it. Yeah. So speak up, you know, share your experience and don't suffer in silence. If you don't like what's going on, you have, you know, places like these that you can, you know, bring your issues to and we trash it out. And if, if we have to involve the authorities, we have a lot of them who are itching, their bodies itching them to do something about it and I know there are other subtle means apart from the whole arrest him take him to prison and stuff no there are other subtle, subtle means to yes. deal with people who have decided not to you know exercise any form of sanity and I'll be looking forward to your next piece uh, by the way when did you start this whole you know spoken word thing when did you discover that you could actually do this and how many attempts did this take this particular one was mm. a, a one take thing. Okay. But I have been doing spoken words since. Uh, I think you'll actually best get the best quality when you're speaking from the heart and yes, it's a personal well, experience. I, it's way easier. <laughs> I write regardless. So mm. sometimes you have to um, 
embody the situation you're trying to write about. Mm. But this was personal experience. But other times I've had to embody this way. Like I did a piece on Chibok Girls. Mm. I think I presented it here in Search FM a while yeah, back. I, I did a I did a piece on Chibok Girls and I had to envisage that I was a Chibok girl mm. for that piece to come together um, nicely. Okay. So I have been doing spoken web. I've been writing poems for maybe since 20, 2009 or so, 2008, 9. And Passively, just a means of expression, like letting your problem go. So the ink, spilled ink, mm. helps my feelings mm. uh, most times. So sometimes it comes out great. Sometimes I just melt the paper away yeah. and just let it go with that. Mm. That's yes. that's very good. I have to keep that up. Thank you. I much. think uh, at a time like this, we need more voices like yours to uh, to keep you know um, sending the message. We need it uh, out there loudly because the trend has to stop. Let's break the cycle. So well done. Good Thank job. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye.